the show, the comedy show, the, the one on the show. radio, but it's on your iPod or actually your phone at this point. <laughs> so that's the new intro that's to the jingle. just podcasts in general. Mm-hmm. Welcome back. That's Sean Patton. Uh, that's Caitlin Cook. And you're listening to Five Words, the podcast. If this is the first episode where you're joining us, which hopefully it's not, but if it is. But if it is, we accept you. We accept you. Like you've always you. been here. Orange peanut, I accept you. And if you know what that's from, we accept you twice as much. Very true. Yeah. I want cake now. Anyway, <laughs> um, if you're just joining us right hey, now. Hey, I found Fido. All right, sorry. <laughs> what if the whole podcast is that? It's not. Here's the podcast concept. Basically, we have on a guest. We shoot the shit. They have a story prepared that they're going to tell us. But before they tell us. We ask them to provide five random words from the story that they feel Sum it up. Yeah, encapsulate that story. And based on those five words, Caitlin and I, and based on what we know about our guests, Mm -hmm. we tell them our version of what we think their story is. And And uh, it's usually spot on. Right. And then, because we're just, you know, we're really... uh, We're oracles. We're oracles. Uh, And then uh, they tell us the real story, which, you know, is repetitive, obviously, since we just figured it out. Clearly. Spot on. Clearly. Uh, All the details ironed out. Uh We nailed it down to the syllable. We definitely did. Um, yeah, so enjoy. Enjoy. And now you're going to listen to an episode by one of my personal favorite auteurs in the business. The mm-hmm. one, the only, the well, only one. The only one, Langston Kerman. Which, uh... Langston Kerman. Sorry. Langston no, Kerman. Thank you. The first time I said it was, it, it didn't match how great he is as an auteur. My tone of voice. Langston, it's also like his name... Lang- the name Langston Kerman, like he could be a race car driver and it would make equally as much sense. Yeah. He studied poetry and that's equally fitting for his name. He's Yeah. It's poetry, the uh, NASCAR of <laughs> literature. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, poetry would be more Formula One. Anyway, point being, Langston is a... Uh, I'm glad we finally got him on. I love the Me dude. Me too. He's, He's great. Yeah. Um, we spent a month hanging out with him at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Yeah. I've... I think I met him when I lived in Chicago. We were both like teachers in the comedy world. Chicago people. Um, But in general, uh, you might know him from HBO's Insecure or from Amazon Prime's The Boys, but you might not know his comedy. comedy. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you should check it out because it's fucking hilarious. Wonderful, wonderful storyteller. Very... Paints a vivid picture. Uses that poetry degree. He definitely uses that poetry Funny degree. Funny as fuck. Hey, Sean. What? What shows are you doing this week? This week, uh, I am very excited to say I am at uh, one of my favorites, one of the best comedy clubs in the country, Acme Comedy Club, Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Minneapolis, Minneapolis Minnesota. Uh, I'm going to be there all week. So starting today, tonight. Hell yes. Uh, I'll be there Tuesday through Saturday. It's my favorite. You're going to love it. It's, it's just, come, come see a show there. It's great. It is a great club. It's one, of the um, great, it's one of the best. I'll probably be doing a couple little guest spots and hopping on showcases around town. If you want to catch Langston, you should go to his website, langstonkerman.com. I said web, website. <laughs> you said website. Oh, you no, said I website? It, yeah, I said it weird. That's, hey, if you can't. So people maybe don't know what a website is. Maybe, and that means your brain acts like the search bar. It's like, did you mean website? So there you go. It's true. But um, he's had a smattering of shows in New York and in L.A. that he posts on his Instagram. So go yeah. see those first. But then if you want to get tickets to see it, like him do a full club set, full hour. Yeah. Um, he's going to be in Worcester, Massachusetts at Hoo Ha Ha. Hoo Ha Ha. Woo Ha Ha. That's a fun club. It's a great club. It's really good. I just yeah, did you it. were just yeah, there. I enjoyed um, it. And he's going to be cool. at Zany's in Rosemont, Illinois in the new year, early new year. So buy tickets. Go see him. He's blowing up. Just come out, support live comedy, and Do it. enjoy the episode. Because we support you. And landing gear down. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Landing gear up because we took off. Oh, okay. And uh, now we are up in the air for the flight that is en route to Langston Kerman Town. Woo, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know how this was going to do. <laughs> it now felt I'm... like one of those takeoffs where you're like, oh, we might die. <laughs> but no, we didn't die. It was great. 
You ever have those? You fl- okay? All three of us at this table, by the way, fly a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You ever? You know how how often do you notice like during the takeoff you just discussed where it's like bumpy as shit mm-hmm. and like and it's that kind of and all of a sudden you feel the plane either climb or like you just yeah, feel like a like a like oh that's a yeah. yeah and everyone around how much everyone around you was just like this is normal <laughs> <laughs> this is fine no it's, one, it's, it's the most jarring thing oh. that no one ever reacts to yeah. those things because it's like okay well I'm being ridiculous I guess yeah but I feel death like yes. you literally feel yeah. death in your stomach and no one's gonna react to this no one's no one. even Stirred by this, I feel like everyone is thinking the same thing of just like just act normal. Mm-hmm. This is normal. It is fine. But well, when people do start to freak out, that is more scary. Yeah, I mean it's it's so out of our control at that point. Oh I yeah. guess like if you don't just sit there and breathe, you're yeah. you're essentially like you know gonna lose everything. Have you ever been on one other. of those planes where it's like about to touch down and then it takes off? Again, I have not. Oh, that That's sucks. Fucking yeah. terrifying. Yeah, it's really scary. But also, it's like some people freak out, and then other people are like, "This is normal." Sometimes this happens. Yeah, I th- yeah. yeah. I feel like you know certain airlines, like like Southwest, for example, they allow their uh, flight attendants just be goofy and crack mm-hmm. jokes. Yeah. Yeah. I think all airlines should designate one of them to almost. Not like a ch- like a cheerleader slash band leader hybrid. That's just kind of like, yeah, folks, these bumps suck. I know <laughs> it's all right. We go through this. Let's be on there just the yeah, whole time. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, I know it feels like we just did a barrel roll. We didn't. It's right. just cloudy. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, it makes me nervous too when yeah. they because the flight attendants have to always sort of be presenting mm-hmm. as everything is fine. Right. But they also have like those signals that they use mm-hmm. that sort of like they'll be like every uh, the flight at, the oh the yeah pilot has turned on the fasten seatbelt sign. I need yeah. everyone to sit down right away. Yeah. It's like, oh, why is this? Mm-hmm. You're being calm, but you're bullshitting. Yeah. Because yeah. y'all are sitting down. Like, it's this yeah. is a thing. Yeah. And sometimes they just have it. the bong, and then mm-hmm. nothing happens, and you're like, what does that mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, also, like, have you ever uh, have you ever gotten drunk with pilots? No. Uh, in Savannah, Georgia, at a bar once. <laughs> no. That I like this summer. I was in. I was doing shows in Savannah. Which is an awesome city, very very sisterly to New Orleans, mm-hmm. very similar vibe. Um, uh, but Savannah, I, Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> um, and you, I, I got, I just got these pilots were at the show because Savannah is a training. I think there's like some one of the airlines trains in Savannah, which is mm-hmm. like here where they can just drink on the street till five sense. in the morning. Yeah, Delta's based in Atlanta. Atlanta, yeah, there yeah. you go. Maybe there's something there. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. and. I got shit faced with them, and I and I just unloaded my like, a. <laughs> it really bothers me when you don't talk to the people before. I don't like takeoff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the one pot, the one dude was like, "Well, uh, I mean, but a lot of times the flight attendants will do that." I'm like, "Flight attendants aren't flying the plane. Right. Yeah, They're not in I don't. Charge. I don't need their opinion. I need yeah. to know where you're at." And then the other pilot, she was like, "Actually, I'm nervous." She's like, "Sometimes." It's like nerve wracking. Mm. Wow. So and and so and she's like, if the pilots, if the if the flight attendants do it, I'm like, yeah, just you know, if you guys want to just say these few things, that's fine. I'm like, yeah. oh, I guess, okay, I get it. But that's crazy. I never even considered the possibility that they're nervous. That they're yeah. just like, my voice is going out to eighty to a hundred. Hey, everybody! <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want to sound exactly. Yeah. I don't want a nervous sounding pilot. Who's ready to go to Denver? Yeah. And also, like, <laughs> we're you gonna said, be fine. I swear. <laughs> you said this was a the female flight attendant or female pilot that it was, was nervous. A female pilot, yeah. yeah. I also feel like there's gonna there's a lot of grumblings of like if there's any turbulence and then a female voice comes over like there'll be men in the cabin that are like oh fuck we're gonna sure. crash it's a woman flying the plane yeah you're going in yeah. with this sort of like immediate judgment that yeah. you're not gonna be able to win against them yeah being like hey and they're like fuck a lady yeah even though like uh, most the the like the smoothest rides I've had have been yeah. from women yeah. And, and <laughs> oh, yeah. you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, not just talking about airplanes. Your <laughs> listeners know what I mean. I do like the idea of an emotional security flight attendant, though, that just jokes the whole time. The whole time, yeah. just walk me through it. Yeah. Just like because that's oh, that's that thing. Because I asked those pilots, I was like, 
other also when there is turbulence and shit, because I, I told him like I don't care if the you start doing somersaults in the airplane. I don't give a shit. Start doing what? Somersaults. <laughs> or, somersaults. 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 Or somersaults. barrel rolls. <laughs> or uh, I don't care. I don't care if you if it dives and then pulls back up. Yeah. As long as you explain to me sure. yeah. what's going on. Just like hey folks, we got to do this. There's just yeah. There's a giant it's storm a in front of us. Bird. We're going to go under it. <laughs> yeah. Fine, yeah. There's a condor we're going to pass right now. Have you seen... Uh, I don't give a shit. As long have you seen me. the movie Flight? Yes. With Denzel? Yes. Like, when it, as fucked up as it was when he was like doing the fucking like yeah. upside yeah. down flying and shit, yeah. there was something almost cathartic of him being like, this is what we're going to have to do yeah. right. in order to get this plane to land. Yeah. As opposed to, like you said, just yeah. having some wild shit happen and then being a victim to whatever is yeah. supposedly, you know. Mm -hmm. I, lo I love that part of that movie. I mean, spoiler alert, because you would have to be <laughs> drunk and on coke to be like, we're going to crash, let's barrel roll it. <laughs> it's the only way we slow it down. If we're going to crash, we're <laughs> crashing awesome. <laughs> but also, Very though, true. give me a female pilot be strictly because she's like, oh, you don't think I can fly? Give me that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Give me right. that instead of the apathetic 50-year-old you know, guy who's like, sure. oh, well, if this plane crashes, it's its fault, not mine. Yeah, you want a pilot that, that's going to earn it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. treat it like a real fucking Hell adventure, yeah. a job. Exactly. Yeah. That's what... Flying a lot is... That's a thing. This That's part of... Being a comedian, that's the one part I just never thought about. Mm -hmm. mm. Was like how much time I'd be spending in airplanes. You know what's wild yeah. is you hear these stories about people who don't fly. Yeah. And yeah. still have a similar lifestyle to us. Like Billy Bob Thornton doesn't fly. No shit? Yeah, apparently. Because uh, Jenny Zagrino did uh, Bad Santa 2 with him. Mm. And they literally road tripped because they shot it in like Montreal. They road tripped from California to Montreal like in a tour bus because he wow. just won't fly. It's like Dude. fucking nuts. Yeah. And like Regan doesn't really fly. He like apparently. Oh, yeah, he's got like, a bus. Yeah, he he's does got a bus yeah. and shit. I don't know if he's like afraid of flying, but he definitely doesn't I mean, do it. I can say if I got to the point. I would only fly when necessary if I had like if I had tour bus money because tour buses are also just like this is cool. There's yeah. a there's a PlayStation, there's Wi-Fi. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Like I can just kind of dick around. But then again, I guess that it's cool for like three days, and then you're like, get me off this goddamn say, bus. Yeah, you yeah. get claustrophobic. Yeah. And it's so isolating in a different way, I guess. It would be funny to have a tour bus and to like nail a treadmill or like an elliptical to the top of it <laughs> and just get up there <laughs> while you're going 65. But it's somehow just powered to elliptical. the bus to create green energy. Sure. Yeah. I would say only boat tours from now on. Just buy a boat. Hell Coast yeah. City's you're going to be home. a cruise comic? Is <laughs> yeah. that what? No. Because that's a no, different no, energy. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't have that energy. No. Um, <laughs> So Sean and I have talked about doing like a cool boat tour around like coastal cities, but it's like a small boat that has a stage. So you invite everyone on oh, and then yeah. they leave and then right. you just go to the next town. It's kind of like the river boats, yeah. like with in, you know, the fucking gambling and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's fun. I also like the idea of just doing a coastal, like in a, in a, in, get a, a few of us in like a, a large enough boat and just go like Seattle. Down to the bay, mm -hmm. down to L.A., San, San Diego, then like come through the Panama Canal, do Cancun or Cozumel or something, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Then like New Orleans and then every coastal city, the and then go burger. up the Mississippi because the Mississippi you'd get you'd hit New Orleans, Baton Rouge, I think Memphis, definitely St. Louis, mm -hmm. and then definitely Minneapolis. Yeah. Because that's where the Mississippi ends is in Minneapolis. Did you know that? Isn't that crazy? I did not know I that. didn't know that. Yeah. It, did you know in Chicago they... Reversed one of the rivers. I yes, forget which I one. Did know that. I knew that. Yeah. Which is insane. They're just yeah, like, we're yeah. just going to reverse the flow. And oh, yeah, you're from Chicago. And that's why everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's why the world is in yes. a perfectly comfortable place. Because yeah. reversing river. rivers is normal. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I'm you're from Chicago, right? Yeah. That was not a segue. I promise no, that was no, not no, an un. That was done. a very, that sounded like a very, like, yeah, coastal tour. Up the mouth of the Mississippi. Did you know, speaking of rivers? Uh, it's weird that you have it written down, though. Yeah, right? I know, right? It's not a segue. What is that piece of paper doing That's here? That's nothing. That's just my... <laughs> whatever. All of That's notes. a coaster. All the research that we did on right. you. It's just Chicago written down with a lot of circles around it. Right. No, because yeah. I, I remember that tour being... That, like, boat tour you take through Chicago. Yep. 
they're being like this. The architecture tour, and I was like, this is great. Like they're because mm-hmm. it is Chicago is architecturally an adventurous place. Oh yeah, yeah. It's very like oh yeah, that's it's fucking awesome. Like yeah. that's where that's where architects went. That was like the alt world for architects mm. in what the twenties or whenever. Yeah, I, so I grew up in Oak Park, Illinois, which is uh, the first suburb out on the west side of Chicago. Okay, and that's where all the uh, Frank Lloyd Wright homes are. Oh, it's like where all you know oh. he was the innovator yeah. of like suburban housing and you know whatever. But like it's it's a big deal in my neighborhood where like there are walking tours of all the mm-hmm. Frank Lloyd Wright homes and shit. What now? Those do people actually live in those? Yes, some of them. Some of yeah. them. Some of them are like uh, historic monuments now. Yeah, I was about but to say. Yeah. most of them have some people in them. At least in my neighborhood. All right, because um, that's what I what I always liked about Chicago, and I don't know. This is what I feel about it, is I feel like it's a city that obviously grew up in the shadow of New York, kind of in a way. I, I mean, it's you know? funny because I I never I don't know that I ever even considered Chicago a place that ever envied New York. I agree. I just oh I, definitely not envied New York. That's what I'm saying. It's no, more of like envy, a fuck I, off. We're going to yeah, do our own thing. It's very. Yeah. I agree. It's yeah. very yeah. separate in that yeah. way. Yeah. Because like Philly feels like it's like trying to yes. to remind you that it's as good as New no. York. Yeah. Boston's trying to prove it's as good. Yeah. We don't give a fuck. Chicago doesn't yeah, Chicago doesn't yeah. give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Chicago has more of like a fuck off. Yeah. We'll do our thing. We figured it out. We're yeah. going to do our thing over here then. I, can't, <laughs> I cannot do a Chicago accent. It was closer that bad. than normal. Really? Yeah. That, <laughs> what if yeah. from now on, I just, wherever our guests are from, I just do the whole podcast in an accent from there? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could be a cop on the south side. I could definitely, I could, I could definitely be a, like a pizza guy on the south side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a, the moment I have to raise my voice like, all right, why don't you stop uh, drinking beers? Yeah. There. You know what you sound like? Uh, John Mulaney doing J.J. Bittenbinder's voice. Sure, yeah, that's yeah, what you yeah. Sound Jesus. Like. Yeah. So I, that's my thing. I can only impersonate other people impersonating things properly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Chicago's. Uh, that's a city I lo- I love going to. I don't go back to enough. It's where we met. Yes. Yeah. Where? Ukraine Village. Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. Ukrainian yeah. Village. Ukrainian Village. <laughs> yeah. No, we met. Um, <laughs> I don't know that I've ever told this story on the podcast. We met at um, Parlor Car. Yeah, that was at the Parlor show. Car. But oh, now I'm trying to remember. Bar de Ville. Bar de Ville. Bar de Ville. Yeah. Okay, it started with a D. Yeah. yeah. And um, it was a show run by Maddie, Maddie Ryan, Ryan, Kenny DeForest, and Will Miles. Yeah. And I was teaching at the time, so I used to go every Thursday to this free comedy show because I was very depressed doing Teach for America. Sure. And um, and then. They would. They got to know me, and they would text me to bring all my drunk teacher friends whenever yeah, yeah. they wanted to pack the room. So they'd be like, "Hey, Hannibal's dropping in," or like, "Mulaney's dropping in," and then they would text me, "Sean Patton's dropping in." And I was like, "Which is ridiculous." I don't know who that is. <laughs> they must have been <laughs> fucking <laughs> struggling that week. Like uh, Mulaney, Hannibal, Sean Patton. No, they would just text me when anyone was in town. Who the town fuck is this guy? And they wanted to impress that person, so they yeah. texted me that Sean was. Was there impressed people? I think they were texting you just to be like, "Hey, how many people don't know who this dude is?" <laughs> <laughs> You're just... funny, man. People <laughs> like you. <laughs> don't deflect. I know, right? <laughs> Accept the compliment. Um, but yeah, I uh, I went. Um, I had two friends there that didn't know each other, so I felt obligated to go as well. And I sat at the bar afterwards, talking to my roommate with my drink in front of me, and I made a hand gesture that was like elbows back for people that are not watching this, listeners. Uh, and I knocked a full beer onto the person sitting next to me, who was Sean. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So the entire beer landed on your pants. All over my back. Yeah. Back. All over okay. my back. Yeah. Shit. And I turned around, and she was just going, ah, you know, like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you know? And I was, and I was. And charming. Yeah. Very yeah. charming. <laughs> and uh, then we decided we should buy another beer for, because it wasn't my beer. Okay. And it wasn't hers. Yeah. So it was like, somebody's going to come back for that beer and be pissed that it's not there. So we're, we were like, we'll just wait. And start. that's how we started talking. And no one, no one ever came for that beer. This is like a genuine meet yeah. cute. Yeah. 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 That like doesn't exist yeah. in real life. It really doesn't. And we, we decided, you know whose beer that was? Who? Cupid's. Cupid's beer. Yeah. <laughs> I thought Jesus. you were going to say Jesus. No, 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 no. no. Jesus, our Lord. There were oh, three man. beers that day. <laughs> <laughs> when, <laughs> I was not drinking one because I was hooking you two up, you dumb fuck. No, it was, yeah. You know, Cupid can't just walk into a 
bar in Chicago with a bow and arrow. Sure. You know? mm-hmm. In February, my Also, you. he's underage. Also, so way underage. Yeah. yeah. But he can mm. set up a beer. That's amazing. Yeah. What a yeah. fucking great yeah. story. Yeah. How, good, did, how did you, you meet your, uh, your, your lover? My <laughs> lover? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where you were going. Uh, we met through a mutual friend who uh, was also living in Chicago at the time. Mm. And uh, I went back to visit family because it was like Father's Day weekend. And uh, she was just visiting our homie. And uh, I, uh, we all went to a party and made out at the club. And, like, uh, she was living in Baltimore at the time. So I kept, like, pursuing because I was in New York. But mm-hmm. I was like, yo, let's kick it, whatever. And yeah. she wasn't interested. Six hours, all. not that big of a yeah. deal. Yeah. <laughs> or not no. that far. What's Baltimore? It's three. Three, three yeah, yeah. But it, either way, like, I was like, you know, we should keep hanging out. And she was like, nah, I'm good. Like, wow. sort of giving me very, like, it was fun. We had a good yeah. time. Let's move on kind of energy. Yeah. And I just stayed persistent in it, being like, hey, you know, every once in a while, how are you? Thinking about you, whatever. And so eventually I got her to, I had a a college to do in uh, Delaware. Right. And so it was like the halfway point, Mm -hmm. convinced her to come out for that show. Wow. We kicked it and then sort of like both decided we wanted to keep hanging. Oh. That's awesome. That's yeah. similar, actually. That's a movie right there. Yeah. You know? And it was amazing because I bombed like a motherfucker on that college. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 She yeah. still liked it enough to be like, yeah, this is dope. Any, That's true any, 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 any woman who goes for a comedian that murders it on a college gig is probably looking to like <laughs> also mother someone. Right. Yeah, cause, cause, it's cause a weird energy to college, celebrate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Colleges are fucking weird to yeah. the format. Wait, did, because like this sweater you're wearing. Yeah. Which is by far my, one of my favorite articles of clothing I've it's ever seen. It's pretty great. It's pretty great. But is that, <laughs> is that a, in, is that a Langston Kerman purchase or is that a, Influenced by the wife. Oh no, I purchased this. Okay, I don't let her buy my clothes (laughs) at all. (laughs) I have a very we argue about it a lot because she wants to do like matching costumes and shit like that. And I genuinely believe she's trying to cuck me, and I don't like it. (laughs) Yeah, so I Uh, fight every every instinct she has of us like looking similar, right. like matching and shit. I'm that's like, no, so fuck funny. that. No, I'm a, oh, no. Nah, because that sweater <laughs> has a very like like 21st century masculine <laughs> where it says like, I'm independent. Sure. I'll fucking, I'll, I will go for what I want. I will, I will achieve my goals. Yeah. Um, if someone gets fucking crazy on the street, I'll step between you and them to protect you. Wow. But I will never tell you what you can and cannot do. And if I raise my voice, I will apologize later <laughs> with a tear. Not tears, plural. A I, tear. I love that you got all of I just wanted to be comfy. Yeah. <laughs> just like, I like this color pattern. Right. It was a funky <laughs> color. Hey, co- the, er, color patterns exist for a reason. It's true. They trigger certain mental... <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Wait, so funny. you had already moved to LA when we from, met no, from New Chicago, oh. no, or New York? I yeah. No, you you moved to New York for a while. I lived in New York for yeah. four years, so we were dating for two years, mm-hmm. long distance. Got it. So we never lived in the same city together until we moved to LA together. Got so it. it was sort of a uh, very. Ah. It was, this is a non-traditional start, I guess, yeah. to a relationship. But it also, you guys are comics, you know this. It's uh, it's it's sometimes easier that way because you're not then obligated to be around someone every night. Like I could yeah. just go out and do comedy, right. mm-hmm. and then every once in a while check in, as yeah. opposed to like literally having to be there for dinner to make yeah. you feel seen and heard and shit. I yeah, yeah I I honestly feel like. Um, People have hated on long distance relationships mm-hmm. since the dawn of time. Yeah, and in reality, if you do it right, it can be a almost a better situation. It can be yeah. awesome. Yeah. It, what our our situation was yeah. awesome. I didn't want to keep going. Sure, no, no, no. Was, you have to have it, like an yeah, end game. you got to yeah, yeah, know yeah. an end game. But yeah. like, it was fucking great. I liked it. But That's actually, great. my actually, uh, and this is part of a uh, shout out to the one and only Jeremy John Neese, chef extraordinaire, <laughs> New Orleans, Louisiana. But he. Uh, is uh, a he's a fact checker on the show. He likes to point out things that I said that he doesn't agree with yeah. and, and text me about them. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting, Jeremy. But also, <laughs> he had a big uh, he he had a big part to do with when Caitlin and I first met, and then she event like six months in had to move to England. 
Right. Right? And I was just texting with him just being like, because he had a similar situation. His now wife is British. Mm. And they were dating for years. And then, like, this is the part he's probably going to fact check me on because I'm probably going to fuck up some of the details. Mm. But her, like, visa ran out and she had to move back to England for a oh, while. shit. And they stuck it out until she was able to come yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. And when I texted him, like, yeah, you know, this... Caitlin's moving to England, so I guess that's it. He sent me back a very like, what do you mean that's it? <laughs> Fuck that, dude. You feel, you feel things for that girl? <laughs> How dare you, sir? <laughs> then you own it. You step it up, and you deal with the distance. Yeah. And it was just like, Jesus, Jeremy. Right. He's, and he's very like, I'm, I'm Southern. I'm from Louisiana, but he's from like deep crawfish land, yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking Eunice, Louisiana, right. where they have their own version of Mardi Gras where they fucking chase down a rabbit Jesus and all dre- and all dress like... Dress like uh, they all dress up. That's a thing. New Orleans Mardi Gras is just party, and sometimes people wear costumes, sometimes not. Eunice, Louisiana has a specific Mardi Gras where everybody dresses up, and I forget if it's a rabbit or a goat. I'm sorry, I forget, <sighs> but they chase it down they and murder then, it. I don't think they goat. murder. I don't think they murder it, but they do catch it, and then there's some festivities. Sure. And then I think they release it, or may, or they cook it into a gumbo, and everybody eats it. Not sure. That would be murder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. From what I remember, it used <laughs> yeah. to be murder, and then people. It's not started. murder if you eat it. That's my stance. If I could fact check you real quick, <laughs> Jeffrey I Dahmer that's wasn't murder. a murderer. He was celebrating <laughs> a festivity. He ate a kid from my high school. What? Yeah. Did you know the kid? No, oh, okay. I'm too young. But uh, yeah, it was like apparently like a big track star at our our high school who also because he was gay and you know oh, that's yeah. how he used to get people. But like he like I guess got him at some gay nightclub and ate him. Holy shit! Oh wait, and also that's right because Jeffrey Dahmer was Wisconsin based, right? Wasn't he? Uh, he most of his murders were in Chicago, I think. Really? Yeah. Man. That's fucking We crazy. do it big, baby. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Chicago doesn't fuck around. Very true. Y'all had a fire? Shit. We had the fire. <laughs> yeah. Prohibition? <laughs> Overturn it. Yeah. Down the river green. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, was I had a couple of things, um, but the only thing that I wanted to ask was, what was it about her that you were like, we live in different cities, but I'm going to keep pursuing this? Ah, that's a good question. I I mean, I can, you know, she's great. She's phenomenal. She's very smart, blah, blah, blah. But I do think that so much of relationships and your excitement, your willingness is about timing. Yeah. I think I had just gotten tired of, like, chasing puss and, Mm -hmm. like, Mm -hmm. being Mm -hmm. out all the time. And I think she, in many ways, represented a much more sort of together person than I've ever been with and certainly yeah. a much kinder person than anybody I've been with. I often gravitated towards a lot more sort of like mean and mm-hmm. uh, like pokey kind of yeah. personalities. <laughs> and so it was, it's a great way to describe it. Yeah. They're, not, they're not, not assholes. Yeah. They just nah. love to prod, prod, yeah. prod until you just like, pff, until you pop. Fucking antagonists yeah, and yeah. shit. Yeah. And also, so. great band name, pokey kind of personality. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we are pokey kind of personalities. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we're going to annoy you. Thank you, Detroit. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it was like, nah, this, is, this feels like a genuine human being yeah. that I should be trying to get to know. Mm-hmm. If, for no, if in no other circumstance I would want to know you, and the fact that like we made out made it feel cool yeah. and, and fresh and all that shit, so I'm going to try. Yeah. And uh, it worked. I guess, yeah, yeah, it, uh, it worked. That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, and and you are both, uh, you're both black and white mixed. Yeah, you're both. Yeah, is yeah, it? Yeah. Do you have the same parental mixture? Yeah, yeah. Her dad is a uh, is. It's weird. Her dad is German. Okay. Uh, and uh, my dad is Jewish, but my grandmother's German. So technically, uh, he is also a descendant oh, of German people, although her people aren't Jewish, so they were on the wrong side of the party. Oh, there you go. Damn, <laughs> dude. Not my people. Apparently, she, she told me this, but apparently when her dad was cleaning out his father's, like, shit, like, after he passed away, mm-hmm. they found, like, some, like, Nazi artifacts and shit. shit. What? Like, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. there's that side of you that upon finding that would, of course, be like, we should destroy this. But then mm-hmm. there's the other side that's like, well, can we sell it, though? Well, that's the thing. Make some money like, off the They're shit. not 
sure what his stance on it was. Like, oh, was like he's you, oh damn yeah. Were yeah. you a collector of this or were you did you earn this? Do you know what I mean? They yeah. don't know what the fuck his relationship oh, with the like the, that's yeah, yeah that's scary. If are. you go to try and turn it into someone and they upon receiving it they just look at you and go the funeral <laughs> and they think you're like part of some <laughs> hello brother. <laughs> you're like, no, no, ah, I just no. wanted to get rich. <laughs> <laughs> And we will. <laughs> no, no, not that way. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. Wait, that's so. Are are both your parents still alive? All of them? Uh, yeah, 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 yes. Yeah. So that uh, must. I, I, ma- I imagine just the, the hilarity of getting together for the holidays and like both your dads talk about like marrying black women. Ah, uh, her dad. Your moms say, uh, are like white guys, huh? Her <laughs> dad has since transformed into a Trump supporter. Oh, in, no. Uh, no. Didn't really? Even, wasn't even at our wedding. Not a, uh, not oh, a family fuck, get dude. together kind of vibe. But so he is, her parents are divorced then? Her parents have been divorced for a long time. Oh, now. okay. But they, were, the... they were married 20 years. Wow. He was with a black woman for 20 years and, and now has Trump's transformed into a Trump weird, supporter. Interesting story. It's fucking wild. That's so nuts. Yeah. I don't even know how or where. It, I've never even met him because he just says be, he became yeah. such sort of like a zealot piece of shit that yeah. like we, yeah, our that relationship sucks, dude. is, you know. That sucks. That's, yeah, and I understand like a romantic relationship going south or being married for that long, but having a daughter that's mixed race and yeah. that's still going, Jesus. That yeah. adds a whole new yeah. level to the whole once you go black, you never go back. <laughs> it's like... You go for the black rump, or you end up supporting Trump. That's what <laughs> <laughs> Which, that's Sir, <laughs> you better write that down. <laughs> Put that on a goddamn T-shirt. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, that, I can't even imagine. Like, I have a lot. I lucked out with my immediate... My immediate family is awesome. Yeah. And then there's a couple of circles of my, like, family family that are amazing, too. I got a pretty deep, cool family. But then I have, like, outer... Mm-hmm. The outer ring of my mm-hmm. family, the outer, the unexplored territories, right? Where you got some like it's spooky, some of the shit they're into, yeah. And, and like, so the idea of having it be your w- wife's dad, da- dad, yeah, it's like, oh man, that- I mean, to me, it's less bothers. I mean, you voted for Trump, who cares? I don't know, I care obviously, but it's yeah. just sort of one of those things where like everybody has figured out a way to justify their decisions Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in a way that, you know, isn't in their mind always rooted in bigotry or racism or whatever the fuck it is. But for you to detach from your family in order to to Mm -hmm. pursue this, you're there's something sick in you. You know what I mean? Like that's more than just like, oh I like he makes me feel hurt. This is like, no, I I'm a bad person. Yeah. Who hasn't figured out how to be anymore so i need to remove everything that was yeah. in order to keep existing that's yeah so odd. that's actually the most frightening thing about this whole political climate is like it feels like for the first time in my lifetime anyway people are actually putting party over everything else because mm-hmm. i can because i can remember like the 90s like i don't you know i had relatives who were, were very against clinton sure and voted for bob dole and I, you know, and I, I and, and like I had family relatives who, or relatives who voted for Bush over Gore and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. But it seemed like they could argue, you could argue about it, but then still be family. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like even Obama, even as recently as Obama, like I have, I have a, a lot of my family's law enforcement, mm-hmm. right? And I, my uncle, who I fucking love, was never an Obama supporter, but sure. it was always like from his perspective, he's ex-military. He had some very like points about why he didn't like Obama and they had entirely to do with military stuff. Right. And like pensions and things of that nature. And I, I to be honest, I didn't pay enough attention to what he was saying because <laughs> it was just like, because me, because I was a young 20-something trying to be like, but, and arguing, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, we were still family actors. Right. And like now it just feels like people are putting party over everything else. Well, I yeah. just, I think that we're in a place where yeah. party doesn't re- it's not we're not actually talking about political parties anymore no, party is right. just a coded way of saying i actually we're talking about fundamental beliefs and whether or not people should exist mm-hmm. yeah and so really, that's where it's fucked that's up. Yeah. why it's party over everything yeah. at this point because it's like i don't actually think you should be a human and this yeah. party 
allows me to say that without having to come out and say it. Yeah. yeah. So they've, you know, everybody's sort of making their choice of like poor people shouldn't exist or this group of people shouldn't be allowed to do these things. But I don't want to just outwardly say that. I'll just say yeah, I like it's Trump. Very coded. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I just, I just think we all need to pick like a geographical location to meet up if the shit goes down. Because <laughs> like, part of me, like, I mean, this is like dark, fucked up thinking, but you spend enough time alone, you start thinking like this, and it's like, what if the problem is is that humanity has been too comfortable for too long, right? I mean, that's true. And there is this lizard brain level of, like, revolt, and, uh, you know, like this, like, that's naturally in every human being subconsciously, and we're just as a society at a point where there hasn't been a good revolution you know, in a while, in America specifically, in a while, hundreds of years. Yeah. And now it's like what's necessary just to calm subconsciously our like mm. primal side. I mean, I know, I know, I know. Mm. No, I think that's an interesting take. I just don't agree with it. I, I, <laughs> I, hey, I just think you're wrong. I, I think you're great and uh, well, shut the fuck up. I don't, think, I don't think I'm right. I don't, I'm not, I don't want to be right. I don't want that to be the no, case. I know. It's just I just what think, I'm thinking about. Like, um, what if, if we there just is need... a part of the lizard brain that like needs conflict? Yeah. It's, very heavily in the male brain. Like I think sure, maybe sure, the way that sure. we are socialized is it's hard to say if this is a nature versus nurture thing. But I, I think gonna, women yeah. are generally like thought to like we don't like conflict. We do everything to sort of like calm everybody down and make sure there's going to be no right. dangerous thing happening. But I, th- I would argue that that is largely because men have been so awful that we've never even allowed you guys to get to a toxic yeah. place. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know that it's the, the thing, you know, it, it used to be an annoying bit that people would do where it's like black people would have never let this thing happen. And it's like, yes, we would have. Yeah. We just ain't never had no power or money. So we didn't get to be slave Man, owners. Power corrupts. Yeah. yeah. Let me, power it definitely does corrupt. If you give me yeah. a space where I could have owned some slaves, mm-hmm. I probably would have ended up with a few. Like, it's we would have done it. There, well, there, well, there's that whole... Uh, that slavery was actually started by black people in... Black slavers in, in Africa. Africa. Well, I think it was very widespread. But I think well. it was also... It was also... Maybe it was start there, but yeah, then fucking slavers... Started shipping. Yeah, I mean, slavery, I think, has existed in many forms. Egyptians. Right, exactly. So it's not, uh, I don't know specifically where its origins come from, but I just think, like, women, minorities are in no form the uh, in an exception to any of these rules i think power corrupts all and yeah. i think that unfortunately the exact same people have had the power for the in- existence of our country yeah. so we're never probably yeah. going to see a we chance for yeah. other people to the fuck last around episode um of this podcast we had joyelle on Hell and yeah. she was like what what do you think the world would look like if it was like just women dominating everything and i was like well, I think we would have become corrupted. Yeah, <laughs> you guys like, would have started yeah, wars yeah, and yeah. all kinds of shit. Because yeah. what else are you gonna do? Yeah, I don't know. It would be it would be bitchier and more under the surface. I yeah. think just because of little, the way we're so maybe a little pettier. Yes, also a little cleaner. But it, you'd imagine, have done some evil imagine, shit. Imagine, imagine high heels and <laughs> put society in high heels. And then blame society for being in high heels. Right. That's, yeah. my, that's my metaphor, because I hear so many women complain about high heels, and I'm always like, then don't wear them. Yeah. I don't know a man, personally, who's like, women in high heels or none. You right. Know, like, I, I feel like that's like a, a thing women put on each other. But then it's so socialized yeah. that so, like you, you can be the bold person making the choice not to wear them, but you are yeah. also the outlier in a yeah. situation. I get it. Yeah, I get it's why it's fucking... It's all... I mean, I, that's yeah. a really interesting point, too, is that like... Y'all would be toxic. We just have men just haven't given you the chance to. Yeah. Be. That's a yeah. very like, no, you're right and yeah. right on two different Everyone levels. Everyone would be toxic. We've, Again, power corrupts. Yeah, yeah. we've been yeah. beating you at home, so you don't know that <laughs> you I, also could be beating people if dude, you had the chance. Like years ago, uh, fuck, I cannot remember this dude's name. I like him a lot. He, he's a, um, but this was years ago. He's in Minnesota. Um, he's a comedian who found out he was like, not like some people, like a 13th Native American. He was like 88% Holy shit. Native American and yeah. went, uh, I, um, oh man, I'm going to fucking, I'm, I'm not going to try to remember his name, but his name is something along the lines of like Ben Swimming Bear now. Like oh, he went did to like we the meet com- him in Acme? We did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went, okay. to, he went to the council. Spotted Bear. Spotted, Spotted Bear, yes, yeah. Spotted Bear. Um, he, he went to the council, got his name changed, and now, you know, Holy shit. And, but... I was hanging out, getting shit-faced with him at Acme Comedy Club, one of the best. Mm-hmm. And um, 
I, w- I brought that up. I'm like, what do you think America would be like had Euro- Europeans and, you know, never come over? Yeah. And then, like, what would it be like if it was like a Native American run country? Like, what would, would we, would everything be a little more artisanal? Like, what would he be like? No, it'd be exactly like this. Mm-hmm. He's like, have you ever been to a Native American situation? Like, it also has, it's a human it's not, you know, it was the first time it ever really made me think that way, where it was like, oh, it's, we're all fucked up. Yeah, you know? I think, you know, you know, we we find different ways towards corruption, right? Like, it's not as if, you know, it would be identical because Christian values change the way that oh, we interpret, blah, sure. blah, blah. But, like, yeah. you know, anytime you're involving religion and money and yeah. all yeah. these things, like, people are going to act like pieces of shit. And religion is like, I, you know, it's something I, I try and talk about more and more on stage, but it's hard to get out there. How, like, you can almost trace every wrongdoing by mankind to religion. Yeah. It's all yeah. rooted in some sort of belief that your God is better than their God mm-hmm. and they don't deserve to fucking be there because your God, you know, made the, the, made the holy tree, made the limbs blow. And that was, that's the oh, sign. Whatever. You know, it's right. Yeah. It's Were freaky. you raised religious? Uh, no, not really. My dad's an atheist, mm-hmm. so he doesn't, you know. Jewish he, atheist? Yeah. There you go. That's me. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> that's me. Yeah, yeah, that's how he feels, too. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's something up there, but he does not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but so, no, he didn't want any of that for me, or at least didn't mm-hmm. encourage that in any kind of way. And my mom's pretty act. She actively goes to church, but mm-hmm. I think it's mostly for catharsis more than it is because she's mm. a firm believer in the Christian way. Yeah. It's just like, nah, I, my shit's fucked up. I need to talk to somebody and God, in theory, is listening. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I was like 16, or no, I was like 14, I made like a concerted effort to like want to go to church. I was mm-hmm. like, I want to go because my friends talk about it. I want to know what yeah. this is like. And I liked it a lot. I was going like three times a week at, at a certain point in my life. Um, but then I actually remember it. There, there was a day where in Bible study, they showed this video that was about like the devil in music okay. and like mm-hmm. demonic, like undertones of like the songs that we listen to. Yeah. And the video made this big argument that, uh, um, the, uh, John Lennon song, the, uh, what if, what imagine, if, yeah, imagine, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like making this like argument that that song is technically him advocating for uh, yeah. the devil because you're equating humanity with God if mm-hmm. we were on all, all on the same plane kind mm-hmm. of thing. And I was like sitting there and th- at this point I was already writing poetry and like studying in a certain way. Yeah. And I was like, no, you guys yeah. are wrong. You're yeah. misinterpreting these lyrics for the intention of convincing me mm-hmm. to believe in something you're trying to sell. And so it was like a very eye-opening moment of like, I believe in God, but I don't like what this is. Mm-hmm. I, I'd rather have a real discussion about like literature and about what this text is attempting to get me to do yeah. than sit here and let some lady who has a regular job try to convince me that like... I'm, you know, every time I turn on wrong. two chains, I'm going to hell. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I forgot that you have a degree in poetry. Yeah. Which explains how you were able to find a sweater like that. <laughs> <laughs> this was my gift yeah. for my degree. <laughs> Only a poet. Was it? Wasn't? <laughs> no. The professor takes it off and he puts <laughs> yes. it on you. That's, <laughs> it's like a master's jacket. Like, you are a master of the poem. Uh, you finally it's like already. It's the opposite of a letterman's jacket. Uh. Like <laughs> That's good. All right. So wait, so Langston's f- uh, provided us with his five words, oh, yes. yeah. um, which are... Go for it. What are your five words? Date, drinks, walking, studio, urination. Hell yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> so so. Uh, we, we, you know, we did some, we went back in time knowing mm-hmm. this story about Langston. Yep. Yeah. So you want to kick it off? Yeah. Huh. Um, so basically... The listeners don't know, but this is a well-known fact about Langston, is that he um, he really loves dates. Love it. Yeah. Loves dates. Uh, is a regular, like, farmer's market kind of guy. He always goes to the dried fruit, dried area section, tries a bunch of different dates. Mm-hmm. Right. This one particular farmer's market, this one weekend, there's a really cute girl also at that stall. And mm-hmm. you're trying to impress her, and you're like, did you know that dates are, like, actually dried figs? And she's like, actually, that's incorrect. Dates are from, <laughs> like, palm, like, date palm trees. Date, yeah. And you are so embarrassed trying mm-hmm. to like hit on this girl with your knowledge. She makes you feel really stupid that you just are like, fuck it. Today is ruins. I'm going to go. I'm just going to leave. Right. 
And of course, any man, any person can understand what it's like to be embarrassed in public like that. Sure. And so what are you going to do? Get shit faced. (laughs) So stumble into a local, you know, watering hole and you just start pounding them back. And the bartender could tell he's like, this guy got his heart broken by someone he doesn't even know. Mm-hmm. The worst kind of heartbreak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he just keeps him coming. You're fucking hammered. Next thing you know, you stumble outside and you're like, shit. Yeah, I don't know where I am anymore in right. the city. Because also, phone, dead. dead. Uh, so you're yeah. just like, fuck, I, I'm, I guess I'm just going to start walking until like, I see something that looks familiar. Which is, you know, you got that drunk confidence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. yeah. So you start walking. Yeah. And uh, nothing's quite looking familiar, but you're like, whatever. I'm on an adventure with myself. I'm trying to turn this day around. Classic me. And you stumble upon. You walk past uh, Studio 19 Studios, <laughs> right? Yeah. Which everybody knows is a famous very recording famous recording <laughs> yeah. studio. Uh-huh. Famous uh, because, you know, it's been around for a long time. It's old. And their, sound, their soundproofing is not that good. So as you're drunkenly walking by, you're hearing this band in there, you know, rehearsing a song they're about to record about heartbreak, and you're hammered, and you're like, these, you don't know anything, and you slam your fist against the door, yeah, and I'm they Scottish open, now, right, and they're like, yeah. exactly, you know, <laughs> we've all been that drunk, you know, yeah. and they we've open the so door, and they're like, we're trying to record, and you're like, you're trying to record garbage, let me fucking tell you about heartbreak. <laughs> so you go, and you start telling them your story of and heartbreak. They, it's for you, you think it's just this like cathartic, sad story, but they're laughing like you're somehow making it funny. Oh, those pieces and, of and shit! And natural, you know, your natural like, comedic you're, timing. And they're at first, like fuck you, this is my heartbreak, and then you start to realize they're not laughing at you; they're mm. laughing with you. Wow! And you start like kind of finding this comedy area of your brain, and you start making it funnier, and you're laughing at your own pain. And these guys are so like they're losing their minds so much that they lose control of their bladders and they just holy shit themselves and laughing. they urinate themselves in the studio yeah. which is funny for everyone but then later they stick you with the bill mm. because they'd soiled some couches <laughs> and the the chair that the the, the guy sits yeah. behind the tech right. and it's a huge cleaning bill and you're like fuck man how am i going to pay for all this <laughs> and then you see a comedy competition okay where mm. the grand prize is $5,000, which is just enough to cover it. And you're like, hey. And you go tell that story. You yeah. win. And you pocket the money. You don't. You stiff them on it. I stiff them. And that's yeah. how you start your comedy career. Wow. Yeah. And that band never made it. They yeah. Never made it yeah. Of course. And they would have made it if I did give them that money. But yeah. kill or be killed in this sure. world. <laughs> Papa needs to eat. Yeah, yeah. Did we nail it? Well, I'll, <laughs> I'll say you guys did something. Yeah. <laughs> no, it couldn't be further from my experience. Good, good. <laughs> Perfect, yeah. Uh, am I supposed to tell you? Yeah, yeah tell you please tell us the, the real story. The real story is that I went on a date with a girl mm-hmm. yeah. where we had, I, it was a comedy-related thing. Uh, I met her at some club, and then I invited her to a, a comedy show mm-hmm. to like see me do a thing in Boston. Okay. And uh, she came and she showed up late, so she couldn't get in. Oh, no. uh, then we had drinks downstairs right. at this bar, and we kept drinking. It was like a lot of drinking that evening, and she sort of was like very nervous in a way that was like, uh, you know, like not a, mm-hmm. like I was going to do something violent, but just like uncertain in a way that like she wouldn't like leave. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like scared to use the bathroom, scared the energy was going to shift. Weird. Yeah, oh, yeah, like she like had something and she didn't want to ruin it, kind of thing. Yeah, or just like uh. wasn't sure if I would interpret something, oh, misinterpret okay. something mm-hmm. from her energy. So it was a very sort of stilted evening of us, dr- both drinking but also not fully being ourselves. If that Got makes it. sense, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we then uh, decided to go back to my place. I was living in a studio apartment. Okay. That is the, uh, I've lived there two years. That's the longest I ever lived in a place. Uh, and so we were walking back to my studio apartment and as we were walking back, she just stopped and she goes, I, I'm going to pee myself. Standard. Yeah. (laughs) And I was like, Oh, I mean, we're like a block away. And she's like, no, 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 you got to keep walking. Cause I'm about to like piss on myself. I was like, Okay, and I just, I did, because, yeah. like, what the fuck am I going to do? Yeah. But, like, she literally just stood in the middle of the sidewalk and pissed herself. 
and she then didn't, like try and find an alley. And, like, I mean, I don't know. I can't, but like yeah. that legitimate. She was like, it. It is at the breaking point yeah. where I cannot hold this. Yeah, I don't want you to see it. Yeah, but this is happening one way or the other. And then uh, I waited at the door of my apartment, and eventually she showed up, shamed. Yeah. And uh, I offered her moist towelettes, and I still tried to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but did you succeed? I yeah. did not. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. she could do better. <laughs> <laughs> but I love she the... peed herself in the street. <laughs> exactly. I love the idea that that's some, like, underground, only women know, like, litmus test for a guy. It's like, hey, look. If you really want to see how much a guy likes you, yeah. on the way back to his place, <laughs> piss your pants. You got to piss in the middle of the street. Yeah. yeah. And if he yeah. still invites you in and still wants to fuck, yeah. he's a keeper. If not, just call this number. Yeah. We'll come pick you up with new clothes. And if you want to know that he's marriage material, shit yourself in the shit street. Yourself. Yeah. You got to yeah. shit yourself. Yeah. yeah. I mean, That's yeah. That's so weird because it seems like... It, if it was so stilted, it, is, it almost seems like a move to get away or yeah. something. But then she still, I don't know. That's I don't so get odd. it. I mean, yeah. we literally were at that bar for like two hours. Yeah. Like at any point, she could have gone to the bathroom. She could have sort of like relieved whatever right. this yeah. was. But I think she just what was so like uncertain yeah. as like a person yeah. in that way that she was just like, I don't want him to see me as a person who pees. And so then oh. she suddenly peed. And then she became pee. Yeah. And then she became <laughs> she the person who peed. Exactly. In this this, story. Th- yeah, this story is also almost like a metaphor for life. Like, hey, just be yourself. Be yourself. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to end up pissing your pants in the street in front of the guy you're trying to bone. On yeah. a first <laughs> fucking <laughs> day. <laughs> like, wow. yeah, don't... Don't hold back. Yeah. Otherwise, it'll be the worst possible case scenario. Yeah. I, I, it's a personal thing. I prefer women who pee in toilets. I, you know, <laughs> you know and a I, weird fetish I have. And look, dude, yeah. I, I don't think you should be ashamed of that. <laughs> sure. I think, like, you know, like that's that's who you are. Right. You didn't choose that. And that's it feels what you like. I'll be honest. It feels good to hear you say that. Yeah, because man. Because for years, I've been hiding that part of yeah. me. You, you know? feel seen. Yeah, that's I good. feel seen. Yeah. I feel, I feel like this is a step forward. Caitlin, like Caitlin's, is very brave because she will pee in toilets Mm -hmm. and she will oftentimes let you know exactly what she's going to do wow yeah some thumbs up i'll be like i'm gonna go pee yeah and that's that's, i I announce it chills up my spine just now when you said (laughs) just because i know because i know how you know what i mean like that's important it means a lot to you right 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 yeah i feel like a lot of guys (laughs) should do the opposite (laughs) i find myself announcing to Tables full of friends, like man, I have to go shit. Hey y'all, no, no reason. It's pooping time. Yeah. <laughs> it's doo doo out. <laughs> Does it take an hour? Absolutely. If it, if I do it my way, which <laughs> if I do now, it's done. Or later, I shit my pants. Yeah, yeah. Worst I feel like I've been in so many situations where with a group of people, and if and a guy has been like, guys, I gotta go shit. Mm-hmm. I've never. Had that happen with a, a woman at a time. Right. I don't think so. I think more, I think you should, we should start doing that. Yeah. Ladies, like, announce, announce the two. Announce yeah. the deuce. But it's a cultural thing, yeah, right? Like you guys even is. fucking go yeah. to bathrooms together. I yes. think there was like there was probably a part of her that like she was alone. She didn't know me very mm. well. I didn't know her very well. Yeah. There is no like companion in this. And yeah. so it was sort of like, I don't want to do anything that would disrupt or make this weird. So yeah. I will just hold I'll it. Just make it weirder. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. No, I've sh- I have sure sh- I certainly grew up with girls who had the whole, like, girls don't do that attitude. Mm-hmm. And even though you were like, you're insane. Yeah. yeah. But then, like, when you're when you're also 17, you're like, shut up. You just took a shit. You, right. know, you don't yeah. think about <laughs> yeah. what, what, how they, especially in the South. Sure. Yeah. Are like, remember, you don't poop. You don't eat. Yeah. <laughs> you're a lady <laughs> at all times. Any of these things in front of men. And it's like, yeah. like You're it, a shell that it never fills and never goes empty. Yeah. You yes. are just shell. Do yeah. not share anything else <laughs> beneath that shell. Yeah, it's like it's like that's why all the all the all the friends I had, all the girls I hung out with in high school were all like very tomboy ish. Mm-hmm. Cause I also didn't know how to talk to like prim and proper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the the debutante. I'm, I'm like, I don't <laughs> fucking know what to say to you. So yeah. Milady. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hanging out with my friend Tasha. She wears Adidas gazelles. <laughs> Doesn't give a fuck. 
wonder what she's doing now. Tasha Spinoza, if you're out there, hit me up. I'm wondering what you're up to these days. We're all worried about you, Tasha. We used to get real fucking high. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We used to get real high and skip seventh period. Where are you at these days? I bet you're doing great, Tasha. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. I just keep thinking about um, when we were all in Edinburgh and we didn't realize that you were on the second season of The Boys because we thought you were watching the second season of The Boys. Sure. (laughs) That was so it was th- a weird moment of phrasing, I think, that yeah. got... That was just That you classic. guys w- felt far more uh, embarrassed by. I don't know if embarrassed is the right word, but the, you felt more... It was a more dramatic thing than I thought it was. Oh, yeah. It wasn't oh, yeah. a big deal. Oh, yeah. I just thought it was so funny that if I had told someone, hey, I'm on the second season of this TV show that everybody's watching right yeah, now yeah, that's yeah. really cool, wait, and my set, friends were like... Wait, hold on. Let's what? set this up real quick. Okay. It was basically like we were all watching season one of The Boys. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, then we went, went to Wings. Yeah, and then we had this place called Wings in Scotland, in yes. Edinburgh. And Langston, we're talking about Langston goes, oh, I'm on season two of The Boys. Yeah. Right? And we're all like... Oh, cool. And I, and I think we all collectively <laughs> were like, oh, I guess it's already gotten... Okay. I guess yeah. there's a se- season two already. Cool brag, man. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'm going back to these spicy wings. Okay. Yeah. And then we realized that you meant, not that you were watching season two. Yeah. You and were then on season Soder two. Soder got furious yeah. and was like, no, no, he's in it. And yeah. you're like, oh, oh <laughs> yeah. ah. You're in season two, yeah. not on season two. Wait, when does that come out? Do you know? I have no idea. Damn. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, You're not liberty. Papa's not at the top of the list mm. of no. uh, of people they tell when the big announcement. But I, I imagine sometime in the summer. That'll be. You're yeah. pl- you, can you say the character you play? I, I'm going to be playing Eagle the Archer. Eagle the Archer. Yeah. So that's so. This is legitimately we're in the midst. Mm-hmm. Of a superhero, hell yeah! On hell yeah! On, on uh, an Amazon superhero. Wait which... till you see what kind. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like the audience members of the boys and Insecure are like vastly different too. So yeah, like covering very different. Most of my fans up to this point have been uh, black gay men and uh, <laughs> yeah. and women with children. Uh, That's like so funny. single moms yeah. are big fans of me some re- for some reason. So it'll be nice to get like some fucking, you know, white guys in the, uh, <laughs> in the pool now. Yeah. It'll white superhero nerds. Hell yeah. 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 You'll get, you'll get some gay guys, but probably closeted. Yeah, you know, sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, fucking love the boys, dude. <laughs> I love the boys, just the show. I don't love boys in general, just the show boys. I, I gotta clarify that at all times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dicks are look. I'm just saying, dicks are cool. <laughs> I can think they're cool without wanting to slurp one down my throat. <laughs> do they look uh, yummy sometimes? Yeah, but I that doesn't have anything to yeah. do. Is it true that cum's high in protein? I don't know. I'm just saying for the gays. I just like to. I'd like to be buffer, so maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Love the boys. <laughs> um, yeah, that's. I, I mean, that's all. I, that show is fucking great. It's yeah, insanely it's really cool. great. Yeah. Um, this is insecure. So I mean, yeah. those things coming out. Where about? Uh, what about? Are you touring much? What are you doing? Yeah, I'm gonna be out and about in uh, in January. I'm Wait. pretty much done for the year, but, but January you know, you're back yeah, out. January, where, I'll be where, back where? out on the road. Oh, I'll be, like, I'm hitting uh, Madison. Madison, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm oh, yeah, for yeah, that. yeah. That club's fantastic. Yeah. One of the best. Uh, I've never been, you're gonna so love I'm it. Fucking excited for that, and then Zanies in uh, February and a few places in between. Cool. So, where yeah. where can people find you? Yeah. Uh, you can find me at Langston Kerman, L A N G S T O N K E R M A N, on all social media platforms. Sweet. Yeah. Go see Langston, especially if you're listening to this, you're in Madison, uh, one of my favorite clubs in the world, that comedy on state, and Langston, you will love him. You will love him. Fantastic, fantastic if, if storyteller, fantastic comedian. Bit, that's yeah. my favorite. Yeah. You'll <laughs> love it. And I'll the white baby. Still be doing yeah. it. The white yeah. baby bit. White baby. <laughs> it's all. It's all fantastic. C. Langston. Yeah. And uh, not only on the TV shows. Go see him live. Yeah, you will enjoy it Hell yeah. immensely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> thank you. <for> <laughs> <laughs> mm, bye. Hi guys. Usually there is a song at the end of every episode that I write. Uh, But for this one, when we were doing the introduction for Langston, there was a moment where I was like looking up on Langston's website, upcoming shows to help him promote. And Sean was just in the microphone 
just improvising some weird noises that I cannot stop laughing at. It's kind of a song. I just, I don't know. I think you'll enjoy it, honestly. So that's the song for the end of this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Enjoy Sean being a dummy. Menu tour. Okay. <laughs>